In Modesto, California, some of the very first Tesla semis are hitting the roads. The Tesla that you can see behind us is fully operational. They're uh, running up and down the road within a 400 mile radius delivering product to all of our distribution locations and to our customers. We use them the same way you would see any traditional Class 8 vehicle delivering product. PepsiCo, which owns Cheetos, Doritos, and other Frito-Lay products, pre-ordered 100 back in 2017. Walmart and FedEx have also placed pre-orders, but Pepsi was the first customer to take delivery of the new truck. PepsiCo owns one of the largest private fleets in North America, and that's one of the reasons we have partnered with Tesla. We have the 15 in Modesto that we're launching, and then we have 21 in Sacramento, and then we are working plans for the additional units up to the 100. First announced in 2017, the Semi has been one of the longest delayed products in Tesla's history. What makes the Tesla Semi so different, and really Elon Musk's introduction of it, is he really brought the awareness to the broader public. He made trucking sexy. And it could also be its vehicle with the biggest impact. Even though trucks are only a small portion of all the vehicles operating on California's roads, they are responsible for the vast majority of carcinogenic diesel particulate matter. Although it's only 1% of vehicle production, it's 20% of vehicle emissions. Uh, and it's uh, over a third of, of all the particulate emissions. The need for alternatives to diesel is steadily rising as stricter emission regulations are established. In California, at the ports, you're not going to be able to use an ICE uh, engine truck in the near future. Electric is an ideal solution for that. But the launch of the new electric truck hasn't been without issues. There have been a few sightings of the semi breaking down around Northern California. We can have a concept vehicle, it can look great on stage, it can look really compelling and exciting and talk about a whole new future. The realities are quite different. Welcome to the Tesla Semi Truck event. I hope you like what you see. We're confident that this is a product that is better in every way from a future standpoint that wins on economics against uh, uh, diesel trucks in a worst case scenario, and that defeats rail um, in a convoy scenario. At the time, Musk said the semi would go into production in 2019 and made other promises about the truck's capabilities. It really shocked, uh, no pun intended, a lot of the population about a lot of the performance metrics. But delays caused the original timeline to slip. Five years later, the semi has finally arrived. We're incredibly excited tonight to actually deliver our first production Tesla semi trucks. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to actually delivering our first production trucks to uh, PepsiCo. Yeah, sorry for the delay. Omitted from the event, though, were details around the economics, million mile guarantee, and autopilot features announced at the original 2017 unveiling. When Elon Musk introduced the Tesla Semi, it was a big deal. It felt like this was a, a revolutionary moment for trucking. Fast forward five years, when they delivered the Tesla Semi to PepsiCo, it was a, actually a, a much different sort of experience. It felt like they were dialing it in. They had promised these things and were going to deliver them, but it just didn't feel like it had the hype that we had a couple of years ago. The trucks Pepsi received don't have autonomous features activated yet. The autonomous functionality of Tesla is not specced for these vehicles. They have the hardware capability. We'll get to that down the road as an additional capability. When it was announced, the truck was touted to have an industry-leading 500-mile range. 500-mile range. And by the way, it's 500 miles at maximum weight at highway speed. There had been some initial reports that they can't handle the weight or the distance that was initially promised. And so it's more of a wait and see. To start, Pepsi is delivering Frito-Lay products around 425 miles per charge. It's also delivering Pepsi out of its Sacramento warehouse on 100-mile daily routes, going directly to stores, and 300 to 400-mile runs to other warehouses. The contents that are the trailer can weigh about 45,000 pounds is really the accepted weight. And potato chips are made of a lot of air. When we look at soda cans, aluminum, and liquids, these things weigh a lot, and they will weigh out Pepsi wouldn't speak to the price of the trucks, but it is estimated to cost around $180,000.
The cost benefit is still a bit of a question mark because I think the, the price new of an electric truck isn't quite settled yet. I think it's safe to assume that it'll be at least double the price of the equivalent diesel model. First generation and early development has additional research funding and all that. That's where the partnership and support comes in. But ongoing, we believe there is a positive economic business case for electrifying the fleet. But experts are predicting that electric trucks will be cheaper to operate over time. When you take everything into account, a diesel truck will be 20% more expensive than a, than a Tesla semi per mile. If you have a predictable uh, charging cost, uh, you can eliminate the expense of fuel and the more volatile pricing that comes along with fuel. The big cost savings that a lot of people are seeing as they transition to EVs is that the amount of maintenance is significantly lower than traditional vehicles. Obviously, many fleets are thinking about it from that perspective. That total lifetime cost is, is significantly better. Diesel vehicle storage tanks are cheaper and the fuel is more expensive. Electricity is more affordable. Batteries are more expensive. There's always a constant dynamic between those two, right? And so we like to diversify our portfolio of solutions. Starting in 2019, Frito-Lay has been transforming its Modesto facility to demonstrate the sustainable benefits of zero and near zero emission technologies. This project has delivered a 91% reduction in greenhouse gas, and we're using this as a showcase to then cascade to our other operations. PepsiCo partnered with the California Air Resources Board to make it all happen, matching its $15.4 million in incentives to purchase vehicles, including Tesla semis, to add to its fleet of over 80,000 assets. We developed what's called the Zero and Near Zero Emissions Freight Facilities Pilot Program back in the 2019 timeframe. And this Frito-Lay facility won one of those grants for a complete transformation of this facility to zero emissions. We thought it would make a smart move to make the deposit, partner with Tesla. So we put a deposit down several years ago for 100 units when they first announced. We thought it would have great application. We had the experience from the last 10 years with other EV products. Pepsi received its first Tesla semis in December and already has them in use. It takes us a couple of weeks between upfitting, logoing, labeling, and driver training. We'll continue to scale that up where over the next several months, most of the drivers will be certified and trained to drive the Tesla vehicles. The trucks have replaced routes previously being served by diesel. This vehicle right here with a 400 mile range enables the driver to leave from Modesto and return home without stopping and charging anywhere along the route. Our average length of haul for over the road is about 425 miles. So we believe across the entire portfolio at Frito-Lay and Beverages that the Tesla semis will meet our delivery needs based on our network. To charge the trucks, Frito-Lay installed four megachargers, Tesla's latest charging technology. What you can see behind me are our four Tesla megachargers. They're capable of charging 750 kilowatts. These trucks here take about an hour to charge which will give us about 400 miles of range. The local utilities, the Tesla infrastructure team, we had to bring additional power into the site. Although Pepsi wouldn't allow us to interview the drivers, O'Connell says feedback has been positive. They like not needing to fuel the vehicles, right? They come in, plug them in, and can leave them. And they like the overall performance. In addition to the Tesla semis, Frito-Lay Modesto is also using electric trucks from BYD and Peterbilt. We have six of these Peterbilt electrified route trucks that are charged on site and used by our sales team to deliver our product to any of our stores in the community here in Modesto. We have several hundred of those vehicles in a, several locations that we've implemented. The company is also using compressed natural gas trucks. This is a fully operational class eight CNG vehicle. We have 37 of them in operations here in Modesto. We have the same complement of range that you would see in any diesel tractor. Competition in the electric truck space is heating up. As the Tesla Semi enters service, it comes at a time when several truck manufacturers are embracing the transition to electric and alternative fuels. All the traditional diesel truck manufacturers also have electric truck offerings. So your Freightliners, Kenworths, Peterbilt's, Volvos, Max, uh, International, they all have electric trucks that are out there already. Volvo just recently launched its VNR electric semi, a class eight truck with a 565 kilowatt battery capable of up to 275 miles of range. Daimler has announced plans to develop its own heavy duty electric truck, the Mercedes-Benz Eactros Long Haul, that will have a range of around 310 miles. 
Freightliner, also a part of Daimler, has the E Cascadia, a Class 8 semi with a 315 and 475 kilowatt version offering up to 250 miles of range. One of the advantages that other OEMs have over Tesla is that they know how to sell into the -the over-the-road trucking business and into the Class 8 environment. They've been doing it for years. They have a lot of experience. They know what fleets want. They know how they spec trucks. They know what drivers want. They have maintenance networks that exist across the country. They're just much better positioned today than what Tesla is to sell into this environment. But even with so much activity in the space, it's still in early stages. To introduce an electric vehicle that can solve the mission that's required of these vehicles, it takes many years, uh, many designs, and a lot of testing and a substantial amount of investment. We're the very early part of that cycle. And it's going to take a few years before we see uh, these vehicles become commercially viable. For trucking to go fully electric, it will require significant charging infrastructure development. There's a huge amount of infrastructure that needs to be built. We think about it as the kind of infrastructure that gets built once a century. Uh, You had the railroads two centuries ago, you had the national highway network a century ago, and the scale is very similar to that. Charging sites for heavy duty trucks are much more demanding than your average EV. If you have 20 semi trucks charging all at one time, that's almost the same amount of power that it would take to power 20 big box stores. Think of that kind of scale of power required. The reliability is also very important. Fleet, for them, time is money, and they have to know that their vehicles will be able to move when they want them to. Electric trucks also have a weight problem. Compared to diesel, they're much heavier, impacting the total load that they can transport. The total weight, and that includes the truck, trailer, and the cargo, is 80,000 pounds in the United States. They have allowed, through some of the new regulation, for uh, electric vehicles to go to 82,000 pounds, but that's the maximum gross weight that a vehicle can have. For Tesla, scaling manufacturing of its new truck will be an uphill battle. We'll be ramping up semi-production through next year. As I think everyone knows at this point, it takes you know, about a year to ramp up production. We're tentatively aiming for 50,000 units in 2024 for Tesla Semi in North America. That sounds extremely high. Uh, when you think that 240,000 Class 8 trucks built total, Freightliner builds maybe 50,000 of those. So uh, they're, they're talking about competing with the big dogs in the existing commercial truck space. To meet this ambitious goal, the company just announced it will expand its gigafactory in Nevada with a new 100 gigawatt hour cell factory and a high volume factory to manufacture the semi. The numbers I saw, you know, uh, maybe 500 this year will be built. 500 this year, I can I can definitely see. 50,000 in 2024, I guess we'll have to wait, wait to see on that one. Despite the progress being made, not all trucking can go emission free. If you look at diesel, in terms of the power it can produce in the engine, on a weight basis, it produces far more power than in what an electric powertrain will do. So because of those trade-offs, you're effectively dealing with these compromises that you don't have to make with diesel. Eventually, though, regulations may force most freight operations to abandon diesel. The you know, more stringent EPA regulations are coming out. There's going to be another level of diesel emissions regulations going into effect in 2027. This is going to be an all of the above solution to meet EPA requirements. So we'll see some hydrogen fuel cell trucks out there. We'll see plenty of natural gas trucks out there probably. In the U.S., California has been one of the most aggressive states in driving this. California has a regulation called Advanced Clean Trucks, which requires manufacturers to sell an increasing proportion of their sales as zero emissions, and ultimately getting to fully zero emissions by 2045 in all sectors of the heavy-duty trucking industry. And with some of the country's largest ports, it is putting significant pressure on the industry to adapt. It is the epicenter of North American import and export supply chain. And so what that means is that if California forces the industry to go carbon neutral and eliminate the internal combustion engine, it means that automotive manufacturers and truck manufacturers have zero recourse against that. They will have to do this because if they don't, they won't be able to sell vehicles into the industry, into one of the most important markets in the entire world. 
operationalizing any type of fleet portfolio, electrified, natural gas, renewable, diesel, there are challenges, but you can really make it all work without making as big a trade-offs as people think. The next five to 10 years, you'll start to see a pretty significant inflection in the S-curve for adoption, especially for commercial vehicles, given that total cost of operation is significantly more beneficial than ICE vehicles. I'd say by the end of the decade, I would say at least 50% of commercial fleets would be electrified. We know we have the technology and we have the policies in place. It's just a matter of getting the coordination to happen and continuing to make, make progress. You gotta give Elon Musk credit. This guy promises an enormously exciting future with really transformational technologies and he's a world-class visionary that really is trying to set the tone for everything and he's put everybody on notice and eventually they may get there. We may get to a point where we actually see the performance metrics that he's promised and the economics that he's promised, but we're not there yet.